Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. While I was in prayer and just worshiping just now, I, I just sensed that God had a word for us already that the, the believers, the followers of Christ, they were, they were like us. They, they weren't superhuman. And the reason why they went to Jerusalem and waited for this gift, this promise of the Holy Spirit, one of the reasons why is because they knew they could not do life without Jesus. They were desperate. They were desperate for God because he said, Jesus said he would ascend up into heaven, but if he would ascend, the Holy Spirit would come down and enable and empower them and he would be with them through the Holy Spirit. It wasn't that they had it all together, that they were there. They were there waiting because they didn't have it all together and they needed the Holy Spirit. John 15, 5, in the middle of all the scripture about the coming of the Holy Spirit, when Jesus told them, John 15, 5 says, apart from me, you can do nothing. See, the disciples, the followers, the women and the men that followed him, they knew that to be true. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. That's how I feel. That's how I felt yesterday as I was praying. And I'm praying that we today, from this day forward, will have a hunger and desperation for more of Jesus in this place, in our lives every day, because we cannot live for Jesus without Jesus. And we need his help and we need his power. So we're gonna spend some time today in this service uh, with some teaching here in the beginning, and then we're gonna come back and we're going to start seeking and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you weren't here a few weeks ago when I preached on this, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the promised gift of the Holy Spirit that came upon his believers for power to be witnesses, to strengthen their worship of God, and, and they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the pattern we see in the book of Acts is they would pray in tongues as the initial physical evidence. But after that, we see that they lived dynamic lives for Jesus, courageous, powerful lives, bold witnesses. They were just on fire for Jesus, praise the Lord. And so that's gonna follow your baptism in the Holy Spirit too. You're gonna be a different person. I, got, I told my story when I was first baptized, my first time, and just so you know, you can have continual feelings of the Holy Spirit. I need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit all the time. The first time that I was baptized, I felt so much joy and so much peace. There was a confidence that I needed. There was a boldness and a courage that I needed that came through that time. I had a taste of heaven in that moment where heaven came down over me and I couldn't help but praise the Lord. And I was praising the Lord in tongues. I didn't know it, but the pattern in scripture says they were praising the Lord and prophesying. Some people, when they pray in tongues, they'll be prophesying and have no idea that they're prophesying or the spirit is praying through you and is prophesying and is speaking to God and he is praising God, the spirit of God praising through you. Praise the Lord. Isn't that what God wants anyway? He wants his creation to praise him again. So when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's as if he's resetting you and bringing you back to a fullness of praising him again. You do not have to be weirded out by that. That's exactly why Jesus came, to destroy the works of the devil, to restore us and reconcile us back to the Garden of Eden, back to a pure fellowship with God. Just so you know, this is not even on my notes right now. This is the, this is the Holy Spirit speaking in this place. You know, with, with this baptism, this is in my notes, with this baptism comes the endowment of power, this gift of power for life and service. With the baptism comes the bestowment of gifts and their uses in the work of ministry. With the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes such experiences as an overflowing fullness of the Spirit a deepened reverence for God, an intensified consecration or sanctification to God, a dedication to his work 
and a more act of love for Christ, for his word and for the loss. I tell you, one of the things I noticed when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit is I wanted more of God and I wanted people to experience him that does not know him. I had a heart for the lost. My heart broke for those, my, my heart's still breaking for the lost. And let's remember what is the purpose of the spirit baptism anyway. I like what George Wood said, he said, work and worship. The purpose of the spirit baptism is work and worship. It deepens our worship with the Lord. And then it also empowers us to be Christian witnesses in our world. I read this a few weeks ago and I wanted to read it today. It's R.A. Torrey, he wrote a book on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he, this is what he said about this, this topic today of receiving the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not primarily intended to make believers happy, but to make them useful. It is not intended merely for the ecstasy of the individual believer. It is intended primarily for his efficiency in service. I do not say that the baptism of the Holy Spirit will not make the believer happy, for as part of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. If one is baptized with the Holy Spirit, joy must inevitably be a result. In other words, he's saying, you're going to be happy. You're going to feel his peace. You're going to feel his courage. You're going to feel his presence. But the main use is to be empowered for witnessing. He goes on to say this, I've never known one to be baptized with the Holy Spirit into whose life there did not come sooner or later a new joy, a higher and purer and fuller joy than he had ever known before. But this is not the prime purpose of the baptism, nor the most important and prominent result. Great emphasis needs to be laid upon this point, for there are many Christians who, who in seeking the baptism with the Spirit, are seeking personal ecstasy. They go to conventions and conferences for the deepening of the Christian life and come back and tell what a wonderful blessing they have received, referring to some new ecstasy that has come into their heart. But when you watch them, it is difficult to see that they are any more useful to their pastors or their churches or their communities than they were before. Wow. What is he trying to say here? He's trying to say, don't make it just about your personal experience and the blessing that it is, because it is a blessing to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into you to make you even more useful for the kingdom of God, for the work that needs to be done in Dover, Delaware, and beyond in the state of Delaware and in the world. That's what he's saying. And he goes on to say this, if, if it's all about me and my personal ecstasy and experience and I never have a brokenness for the lost, I'd rather just have the brokenness for the lost than my personal joy and my personal experience because so many people are dying and going to hell without Jesus. That's some strong words. This isn't any different though from Jesus. Let's go to Luke 24 and it's gonna be on the screen for you as well. Luke chapter 24, 49 through 53. We've been looking at this verse numerous times. We're gonna look at it again. Jesus is with them before he ascends. And he says this, and now, in verse 49, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshiped him and then returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple praising God. This is before they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Notice what they're like before they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Eyes on Jesus, praising God, obeying him, going to Jerusalem like he said to do. Wait in Jerusalem, wait until the, in the city until my power comes upon you. Even the disciples need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to do what they needed to do. Well, the same take, but in Acts. You know, Luke wrote the book of Luke, obviously, and the book of, of Acts. So Acts chapter 1. He says the similar words, similar things. It goes a little deeper. Acts chapter one, verse four. Once he was eating with them, this is before he ascended, and he commanded them, 
Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking, Lord, has the time come for you to be free or to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Has the time come to free Israel and restore our kingdom? You see, their eyes were on physical dominance over Rome. They wanted Jesus to set them free from the oppression of Rome. They thought it was an earthly reign over physical powers, but Jesus came to reign over sinful powers and destroy it and to set people free. That was the purpose. And so he replies this. He doesn't even really pay attention so much to that. He changes the subject in a sense, but he first says, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know, because it's going to happen down the road, but salvation first. And then when Jesus comes back, he, everyone will see that he truly is the King of kings and Lord of lords over every nation. And it didn't happen in their time. But verse 8 says, he says, but you, he, he changes their mindset. He changes their focus on what they're supposed to do right now. What is their expectation? Their expectation was for Jesus to conquer physically Rome and every other place. They were still off a little bit. He changes it and says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. There's been something that's been on my heart brewing for a while, and I'm going to say it today. I've been getting text messages and letters from people saying the church needs to repent. The church needs to repent. I agree. But no one's saying specifically what to repent of. And so I've been seeking God on that. And I know what the church needs to repent of. At least one thing I know for sure. I'm sure there's many things that we could turn away from and turn towards God on. But for sure, what God's been telling me is the church needs to repent from disobeying the Great Commission. We're not making disciples of Jesus Christ. We're not being disciples who make disciples who baptize in the name of the Lord, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching people to obey him and to, to serve him. We are not helping people convert to Christianity like we need to. That's what the church needs to repent of. We need to start making disciples. Jesus has commissioned us to make disciples, to make converts who will follow Jesus, and they will be equipped, empowered to go out and make other disciples. That is what we need to start doing. We cannot sit by any longer. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the, the workers are few. It's still true today. And he says, ask the Lord to send out workers. That's what he said to pray for. He didn't even say pray for the harvest. He said, ask the Lord to send out workers because the harvest is already ripe and ready. We just need people to go out and pick and harvest. The church needs to get busy leading people to Christ, loving people into the kingdom, teaching them to obey and follow the commands in the Bible. That's what we need to do, church. We need to repent of not doing that. We do. It has been a pandemic in itself in America for a long time. And the world is, is trying to take over. The kingdom of darkness is trying to take over. And the church is sitting idly by doing nothing at times. Lord, forgive us for that. Forgive us, God. And I have a word for you today from the Lord. If you're afraid, if you're insecure, if you feel like you have inadequacies about doing all of that, his Holy Spirit is going to fill in those gaps and empower you and equip you to do it. but you should not and cannot do it on your own power. He wants you to lean in and depend on his Holy Spirit to lead you. It doesn't matter how many classes you take on how to evangelize. 
if we don't have the courage to go out and do what we learn. And the Holy Spirit deposits courage to go do it. Peter was the one who hid, who denied Jesus three times. And then in the book of Acts, he's preaching and proclaiming with power in front of people who want to kill him. That's the Holy Spirit in your life. So guess what? God is going to wipe away all those insecurities you have. I don't understand everything. He's going to help you understand. I don't understand what all this stuff means about what the Holy Spirit's going to teach you as you're in your word. All of this is going to come as you seek to obey God and do his will. Pastor Ari did a phenomenal job last week. Those who do the will of the Father. Yes. Those who do the will of the Father. And one of the last things he said is to go and make disciples. That's the will of the Father. That's it. And when we step out in obedience and we do it, the Holy Spirit is going to use you in ways you never thought you'd be used. We count ourselves out before we ever start. But with the Holy Spirit, man, we will be powerful. How do we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How do we receive I'm going to ask the worship team to come out, and there is no formula in Scripture on how you receive. So guess what? Just breathe, because there is no right, perfect way of doing that. But we do see places in Scripture and information that can help us to be helpful and encourage us to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And number one, just so you know, all believers are candidates of being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Every believer. If you're not a believer, you need salvation first before you can be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You need the indwelling Holy Spirit. That's the second thing. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers. But the baptism is separate because it's an empowerment or endowment of power for works of service and ministry. It's a greater fullness of his presence and his spirit. The baptism is a gift. You cannot earn the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I think that's important because how do you know when you've reached the right holiness level to receive? And it's not even consistent in Scripture because in Scripture, we see that they were baptized immediately after they gave their life to Christ. Peter was preaching in Acts 10 and they suddenly were baptized in the Holy Spirit and started praying in tongues. They didn't, they just got saved. So it's not about a certain spiritual level that you get to. It's a gift. It's a gift. Here's something encouraging. God wants to pour out his spirit upon you today. This week, tonight, all the time, he wants to pour it out on you. He does. Jesus wants to baptize you in his spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to fill anyone who's ready to be filled. That's encouraging to me. We can't earn it. We can't earn this baptism. But we can be where we need to be to receive it. Have you ever denied a gift from someone? How do we receive a gift? When the giver is holding out the gifts, we come to the giver. I believe it's simple. We believe that God wants to do this. We believe that he has more of his Holy Spirit for us to fill us. And we simply come to the giver. We simply ask. We simply show up. See, the disciples, they were told to wait in Jerusalem. So they left Bethany, went to Jerusalem, and they waited. So the first thing they did is they obeyed and they waited. The second thing is they waited in expectation and they were praying all together and praising God and worshiping him, waiting for this gift to show up. You know what? I, it's, it's really simple. Three words. They were there. They were there. They believed that God had something for them. They believed Jesus' words. And they showed up to be where they're supposed to be. 
every time I get with God, I can be filled with more of the Holy Spirit. Today, you have come to the table. You have come to God. You have come to commune with him. He is ready to give out his spirit to help you and to wipe away all of those insecurities, all those fears. He's here to enable you and empower you to be powerful witnesses for him. You know, James 4, 8 says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. But you know what else it says right after that? Some preparation. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Do you know what can stop us from coming close to God? We're preoccupied with the world. And God is saying, walk away from the world, repent, turn away from the world, purify your hearts, and come to me. And what's interesting is you will have a desire for more of God the more you come to him. You know what I noticed is I want what Jesus wants when I'm close to Jesus. And when I've been distant from him, I don't want what he wants. It's really simple, isn't it? My sinful nature, my flesh starts to take over and I don't want anything that he wants anymore. But the spirit of God wants to be in fellowship with God and with us. We are to be in fellowship together with God. And there's times where we have to cleanse our hearts, purify our hearts and our minds to confess things and make ourselves clean in God's eyes again, to come to God again and be in his presence. And I wanna encourage you, for those who are getting discouraged because you seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit and maybe you're condemning yourself because you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, well, just so you know, the, the baptism doesn't, always come and happen the same way or in the time that you expect. For some of you, you're very private and so you rather have a private moment with God than please do, but come to the table of God. Draw near to God in your private life and he will show up with his gift of the Holy Spirit to empower you. And some of you, you're, you're quiet and private and yet God's gonna baptize you in front of everyone. And it's going to be weird afterwards. You're going to be like, what just happened? It's okay. We want you here at Calvary to have all that you can have from God. You have nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be embarrassed about. Nothing. We believe, and one thing is interesting in Scripture, is they all believe that this was going to happen. We do need to all believe that this should happen. We need to be in unity right now as a church that the Holy Spirit comes and fills us and baptizes us with the Spirit. And we do know that the initial evidence is to pray or speak in tongues, which is prophesying and worshiping God. There is nothing to be afraid of. That is God's presence in you, restoring you to the way it was supposed to be, working in you. Praise the Lord for that. Do not be discouraged if you have not been baptized. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen today. Maybe it will happen tonight. Maybe it will happen in your car like it did to me one time. Maybe it will happen during your, your Bible time this week and your quiet time with God. It's okay. The point is, is God wants you to seek him. And when the time is right for you, for the first time, he will clothe you with power. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. So can we take a moment to just check ourselves, check our hearts. We're going to pray. Jesus wants to baptize us. He wants to empower us and fill us with his, his Holy Spirit. Do we want that? Do we see the need for it? Are we desperate for more of God? Maybe even that desire is lacking. Well, guess what? He is so gracious that as you seek him today, he will increase that desire for him. 
there's been a word that's been said many times about this topic. And it's really simple. Make room. I think James 4a is perfect for that. Make room for God. Come close to God. Remove things that are in the way. Do not be divided with the world. Separate yourself from sin and the world and consecrate yourself to God. Dedicate yourself to God. And the more we do that, the more our heart lines up with his, the more our desires become his desires, the more we would need his spirit to fall and move on our lives and to pour out his spirit in us. So let's, we're gonna, I told the band not to sing right away because we're just gonna pray first around this room and at the altars. So right now, if you wanna come on up and our prayer team's gonna be ready to pray with you And if you just need to seek more of God today, just seek him today. Just start with that. If you see your need for more of God, just begin to seek him today. We have time. I'm done early. It's a miracle, right? We have time. We've made room today for this to happen. So together, let's begin to pray in this room. Lord, whether we're in the altar or in our chairs, God, we are here to seek more of you today. God, we draw near to you and we know you're already there and you draw near to us. Lord, purify our hearts today. We're sorry if other desires have taken precedence over you. God, forgive us for that. Lord, I pray you would stir up a hunger and desire for more of you. And God, we receive today freely what you freely give more of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Jesus, that you would dip us and baptize us, immerse us in your spirit. God, we want to be witnesses. God, we want to be witnesses. We need your help. We cry out for you today. In Jesus' name. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to seek him and and worship him with our own words. And what's going to happen is as you begin to pray and worship him, he's going to fill you. He's going to baptize you. Let's wait on him. Let's wait on his presence and let's receive today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We're going to be around here to pray for you. So come on up. If you need prayer for healing, If you need prayer for deliverance, if you need prayer for encouragement for your heart, we want to pray for that as well. We want to pray for it all.